Hello, today I'm going to talk about learning Delaunay surface elements for mesh reconstruction. Suppose, suppose we have a point cloud sampled from an object. How do we reconstruct a mesh? We want to take in a point cloud as input, run a surface reconstruction algorithm, and produce a mesh. Surface consisting of triangles, shown on the right. This is the problem tackled by this work. So what's the difficulty here? Well, it turns out that producing a mesh that both captures the detail of the real world and is at the same time of good mesh quality is a challenging problem. What do I mean by mesh quality? We want the output mesh to be manifold. That means if we zoom in on any point, including edges of triangles, the neighborhood of the point should look like the plane. But existing learning methods for mesh reconstruction work on triangles independently, producing many, many non-manifold triangles as shown here. Here, red triangles are non-manifold. So take, for instance, this Eiffel Tower. There are, the non-manifold triangles are abundant. Now let's take a look at some examples of the inconsistencies causing non-manifoldness. Two vertices may have the same coordinate value. There may be self-intersections, faces with conflicting orientations, an edge with more than two adjacent triangles, and so on. So, the key question of the current work is, how can we maximize the manifoldness of learned mesh reconstructions? So how is surface reconstruction from point clouds normally done? Common pipeline consists of starting with oriented normals, shown here on the left. Then Poisson surface reconstruction extracts an implicit function over a grid. Marching cubes can then create a mesh from that implicit function. The Poisson surface reconstruction pipeline works well when used for dense input point clouds. But for sparser point clouds, Poisson surface reconstruction is known to produce an oversmoothed solution. So how can we overcome this oversmoothing? One approach taken by recent work uses data-driven priors to fill in detail in sparsely sampled regions. Point TriNet and IER are both data-driven methods. Point TriNet uses a local patch-based neural network for predicting connectivity and promotes manifold structure through soft penalties. Another paper, IER, meshing point clouds with intrinsic-extrinsic ratio guidance, is also a data-driven method. IER estimates local connectivity by predicting the ratio between geodesics and Euclidean distances. Both these approaches do well at producing detail, but tend to produce non-manifold meshes. Shown here, the red triangles indicate non-manifold meshes, and there are many of them. Learning DSCs Learning DSCs sets out to correct this non-manifoldness issue while maintaining the high level of detail afforded by learning surface reconstruction approaches. Here are the con contributions of this, this work. They combine, the work combines classical methods with learning-based data priors. And the core idea is to combine Delaunay triangulations and learned log maps. Delaunay triangulations, the good thing about Delaunay triangulations are that they're guaranteed to be manifold. And log maps, which are a parameterization that we'll talk about shortly, are used to parameterize complex geometry better than planar parameterizations. So first, let's cover some background and explain what geodesics are. Take two points on this surface. Many different paths could connect the two points. The geodesic path is the shortest path of all those paths. So if you want to go somewhere quickly, take the geodesic path. So now let's talk about Delaunay triangulation. Suppose we're given an input point cloud, as shown here by this smattering of points. We can understand Delaunay triangulation by looking at the, cir the circumcircle of different triangles made up of different choices of triplets of points. Here, the centers of the circumcircles are the red dots, while the black dots are the original point cloud. Notice how no other point falls inside another triangle's circumcircle. Choosing the triangulation whose circumcircles satisfy this property gives the Delaunay triangulation. So why is Delaunay triangulation important? Well, Delaunay triangulation has a special property. It maximizes the minimum angle in each triangle. This makes for good mesh quality, since Delaunay triangulation minimizes slipper triangles. And just as an aside, there's an interesting relationship between Delaunay triangulation and the Voronoi, uh, the Voronoi diagrams, where Voronoi diagrams and Delaunay triangulation are actually dual graphs of each other. 
Let's talk about log, log maps, which are the other component of the core idea of learning to log. Log maps are uh, an alternative parameterization to uh, planar parameterization, shown here by this tangent plane on the right. Log maps are uh, uh, 2D embedding, a different 2D embedding of, of uh, at, a, at a point, centered at a point on a, on a surface, shown here on the left. And basically, log maps are, are given in polar coordinates. Well, let's go into log maps in a little more detail, since they're central to the learning DSCs method. Uh, in a local patch centered at a point P, to define log maps, there has to be a unique geodesic between P and every other point in the patch. In this case, the polar coordinates rho and theta, from here, um, are referred to as the log map or by their inverse, which is the exponential map. Uh, learning DSEs uses the CAPTCH algorithm to align log maps. So let's take a look at that. CAPTCH algorithm is for rigid alignment of two point clouds that are in correspondence. First, the point, like these two bunnies here, like there's the, the blue bunny on the left and there's a red bunny on the right. So first, the point clouds are translated so that their centroids coincide. Second, the covariance matrix of the translated point clouds is computed. So we could, uh, so, so we would view each point cloud as a data matrix where each point is a row, and then we would compute the covariance using those data matrices. Finally, SVD of the covariance matrix computes the optimal rotation matrix to align the two point clouds. Now let's talk about the learning DSCs approach. First, a geodesic patch is extracted for each point, and then that geodesic patch is projected to a log map, which is a 2D embedding of the patch, uh, and then these log maps are aligned, and then they're Delaunay triangulated, and then we call these Delaunay triangulated log map embeddings of geodesic patches. We call those Delaunay surface elements. So the Delaunay surface elements, or DSEs, that vote for candidate triangles, and those candidate triangles become the mesh. Okay, so first let's talk about the learning DSEs approach. Let's consider our input. The pipeline takes as input an unoriented point cloud which in this case is sampled uniformly from the Stanford bunny. The first step of learning DSCs is to choose a point. For that point, extract a patch consisting of its nearest neighbors, using Euclidean distance to determine nearness. Let's look at the first learnable step, which is geodesic patch extraction. The classification networks F theta here learn, the classification network F theta here learns to, to find a subset of points that are geodesically closest to the input point on the ground truth surface. The size of the subset is a fixed proportion of the Euclidean patch size, which is also fixed. There are 120, uh, the Euclidean patch is 120 points and the um, geodesic patch is 30 points in the paper. Now let's take a look at the geodesic classification network. Um, basically, this, net, this, is a, this is a network based on folding net. And uh, the important thing to note here is that the conditions on um, all the points in the Euclidean patch by max pooling them here. And then that creates global features that are concatenated here and used to classify whether, whether any, each of the K points are uh, in the geodesic patch or not. But here's the next step in learning DSCs after geodesic patch extraction. A neural network with a similar fully net architecture learns to predict log maps from geodesic patches. You might ask, where did the ground truth log maps come from? Uh, basically, the vector heat method was used to compute uh, pseudo ground truth log maps. And for more information, please see the vector heat method paper. And here's some more information about the vector heat method and how it works, which I won't cover. So now we have a bunch of per patch log maps, but we have a problem. All the log maps were computed independently. What if different log maps don't line up with each other? In 2D, the line triangulations are guaranteed to be manifold. But this guarantee doesn't hold up the boundary between neighboring DSCs. So to line up various log maps, learning DSCs uses an alignment step. So how does this alignment step work? First, shared, shared points determine a set of neighboring log maps. So neighboring log maps are sets of log maps that share a point. Then the CAPTCH algorithm first rigidly aligns the log maps based on their correspondences. Repeating the CAPTCH algorithm aligns all the neighboring patches to the central patch, and a clustering algorithm cl clusters the sets of ima the images of each point in the log 
Perhaps there was one one image of the point of it uh, that's you know the, the point that's corresponding between all the different log maps. Points are then updated with a weighted average over the points in each cluster. The weighting is based on the distance of each point to the center of its patch. Performing alignment in this way for all coordinates in each patch gives a set of corrected log maps. The corrected log maps are more consistent with their neighboring DSCs. And the, final, the final step of the pipeline is to do Delaunay triangulation on the corrected log maps. Delaunay triangulation of these corrected log maps then gives us our Delaunay service elements. And there's one more step, which is combining the DSCs. So now we have these DSCs, how do we combine them? After running the pipeline, each triangle will belong to three DSCs. Triangles that belong to three DSCs are guaranteed to be manifold, while triangles that belong to only one DSC are considered, uh, are considered the least likely. And a selection algorithm then prioritizes all the triangles belonging to only two DSCs. So to recap, here's the whole pipeline. We start with a point cloud. Uh, classification network reduces uh, patches sampled from that point cloud to geodesic patches, which are projected to log maps uh, that are aligned. The log maps are aligned. And uh, Delaunay triangulation is used to create Delaunay service elements, which are guaranteed to be manifold within a given patch. And then hopefully the voting process at the end will uh, and maximize the manifoldness of the entire mesh. So let's proceed how to, to see how the method works in evaluation. Uh, these are the data sets. And uh, there are some baselines and metrics used. And here are some visual results. Non-manifold triangles are marked in red here. So compared with classical methods, learning DSCs does a better job of reconstructing detail and therefore has a lower chance for distance. Compared with data-driven methods, learning DSCs has fewer non-manifold triangles. Here are some quantitative results, which basically correspond to the qualitative results I just showed. Thank you for listening.